Welcome to the Anches Fire Breath Lameth Congregation, and welcome to our discussion of Sinai, the ongoing revelation. Was Mount Sinai, the giving of the Torah at Sinai, was that a one-time event, or is that something that continues to go on to this day? Is there revelation that goes on beyond Sinai, or was Sinai the be-all and end-all of revelation once and forevermore? That's the question. This question impacts our understanding of Shavuos as well. Is Shavuos a commemoration of something that took place thousands of years ago, never to be continued again? Or is Shavuos something else? That's our question for today. If we look at the way Moshe Rabbeinu, Moses our teacher, tells the story of Mamad Har Sinai, the revelation at Mount Sinai, in Devarim Parshat Vayrchanan, he says as follows, at Advarim Ha'ela, these words, Diber Hashem al kol kahalchem. God spoke these Ten Commandments to all of your community. Bahar, on that mountain. Mitoch Ha'esh, it was out of the fire. Hanan Rafael, there were clouds, darkness. Kol Gadol, it was a great voice. Velo Yasaf. And it didn't Yasaf. Two ways to understand it. There was a great voice, and it didn't stop. The voice kept going, perhaps going to this day, or v'lo yasaf. It didn't, it didn't continue. It didn't hosif. There was no continuation. That's it. That was the end of it. Sinai was the end of Revelation, and that's the end of that discussion. Two ways to view the Revelation at Sinai, right there. Who expresses these views? We have in Rashi, he quotes the, the Targum Unculus, which you can see yourself. The Lo Pasek, the ancient Aramaic translation says, it did not stop. That voice did not stop. But Rashi offers a second interpretation. It didn't continue. Laharot Beotopumbi. It didn't continue with that publicity. At that level, that public level, for all times, that was not, not continued. But by implication, perhaps it was continued in private, if not in public. The Chizkuni also, a French commentator after Rashi, offers an interesting suggestion that it's not really found in the Midrash, but he says it, the rabbis say it somewhere. Kol mem yom, all the 40 days, shamad Moshe bahar lo pasku kolot min hahar. That all the 40 days that Moshe was up on Mount Sinai, the voices the thunder, the lightning, it just didn't stop from Mount Sinai. In other words, was there continuing revelation forevermore, according to Chizkuni? Not necessarily. But was it just a one-time, one-day revelation on Shavuos, the day of the giving of the Torah? No, according to Chizkuni, all 40 days, there was some sort of voice or voices that continued to go forth from Sinai. The Gemara takes a stance on this as well, based on the, the Unclus is based on the Gemara. The Gemara is based on the Unclus. The Gemara in Sanhedrin 17a says, "Velo pasak," it, 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 the voice went on, and it did not stop. The Yushami, the Yushami Megillah, says that you know there are some prophecies which are temporal, the redemption, the end of days. Once the redemption at the end of days takes place, then we don't need Isaiah to tell me that it's going to happen. It already happened. So some of the prophecies, we won't need them. We'll put them away one day. But Chamisha, Sifrei Torah, the five books of Moses, they will never cease. And it's based on this verse. Lo Yasaf. They will not cease. They will continue. The power of the Ten Commandments, the five books of Moses, will continue forevermore. Malbim, a 19th century Polish commentator, rabbi, said that there will, there will never be another one. There will never be another covenant, another breed. There will never be another giving of the Torah at this level. This was a one-time event. So we have commentators who want to view this as a, very much of a one-time event. Others who say that the voice of Sinai never ceases forevermore. In fact, we have a Mishnah, an early Talmudic passage, in Pirkei Avot, in the Ethics of Our Fathers, Chapter 6, Mishnah 2, 
There it says, Bechol yom vayom bat kol yotzeit mihar chovev machrezet veomeret. Every single day, the daughter of a voice, an echo, comes from Mount Sinai. And it says, Oy la labrios melbona shol Torah. Woe is unto humanity for the disgrace of Torah. So there are two ways to understand it. Is it that every day there's a voice that says, Woe unto humanity for the disgrace of Torah? Or does the same voice of the Ten Commandments continue to echo and bellow forth from Mount Sinai? And that is a decree of embarrassment to those, those of us who are unable to fulfill it to its highest potential. That's the question. What does the Mishnah mean? Is it the voice of Sinai that continues? or some echo thereof, or some other voice that comes forth from Sinai. Now, if you ask, is Sinai a, a place that's alive and well? Is it a place that's one of our holy sites for today? Or did Sinai die with Shavuos and as the Jews left Mount Sinai? Well, on the one hand, you have the Gemara in Tainis. The Talmud there in Ta'anit says, the place of a person doesn't bring you honor. A person can honor the place. That's what we find on Mount Sinai. As long as the divine presence was there, then you can't even graze near the mountain of Sinai because God's presence was on it. But once the Divine Presence left Mount Sinai, Amr Torah, the Torah says, Bim when you blow that jubilee horn, everybody can go up on the mountain. The mountain has no sanctity. Want to take a hike on Mount Sinai? You can. On the day of Shavuos, the day of the giving of Torah, on that ancient day, if you went up to Mount Sinai, you would be shot. But today, anyone can go there. The sanctity of Sinai is gone, it's lost. Even at that moment, when they blew that horn, the sanctity was lost. But not so fast, says Eliyahu Anavi, Elijah the prophet. Elijah the prophet was fed up with the Jewish people and their sins. So he runs, he has a little something to eat, and with that special miraculous food, he ran all the way, 40, he ran 40 days and 40 nights until he reached Chorev, that barren hill, Mount Sinai. He came into the cave, Vayal and Sham. Why did, why did he go to Sinai? I thought Sinai was dead. I thought Sinai was a thing of the past. Once the Divine Presence left, the, the, everyone could graze, the sheep could graze up there. What happened? Why did he go there? So Elijah seems to indicate that Chorev, Mount Sinai, is still somehow alive and well. On the other hand, God turns to him and he says, Malachapo Eliyahu, what are you doing over here, Eliyahu? Which one could interpret to mean that Eliyahu, the sanctity of Sinai is gone. You're here, let's talk. But really, Mount Sinai is no longer Mount Sinai. The notion that somehow there's a continuing revelation needs to be modified. The, even this possibility that the voice of Sinai continues forevermore does not mean that people can come up with new Torahs. God forbid. We have a basic principle of faith that Moshe's prophecy is qualitatively different from any prophecy that ever came after or before. We have a basic principle that there's a difference between the revelation of the five books of Moses and any other book of prophecy. And the Gemara and Shabbos says something else. The Gemara in Shabbos says, Elaham mitzvos, when it says in Vayikra 27, that these are the mitzvos. What it means is, She'ein hanavi reshai lechadish davar miata. It means that a prophet, despite his prophecy, cannot ever create a new law, a new mitzvah, a new commandment from God from this point on. On the one hand, the voice of God and the voice of Sinai may in some sense continue. But in some sense, Sinai is qualitatively different than anything that ever was or ever will be. It's panim b'fanim. It's face to face with God. And that is something special. 
So let's be clear on that point.